Whereas um, units one and two were a bit more about the logistics of international business, this becomes more of the marketing of international business. So it will call back on your work in BBI uh, and BTA in terms of understanding how to sell a product to uh, another person. And uh, the dynamic uh, for international business is culture because people are different. Uh, uh, as a rule, you know, often you'll see that companies first expand to a country of similar culture because if uh, the marketing works in for one group of people, it uh, has a li greater likelihood of working with a similar group of people. So, uh, you know, I understand, you know, it's frustrating, you know, I think for you guys understand that the marks will work out and, uh, you know, I uh, wish you all the best with the university acceptance. But in the meantime, I would encourage you to keep studying. Nothing's going to be due during this time that school is closed, but we can still work on the material. You know, you can make a study sheet uh, and that will pay off when it comes to the exam later on. So please keep on task. So our first unit is actually really more of a case study of how McDonald's first uh, expanded into India. So the main part of the uh, lesson, or the first part perhaps, is about how McDonald's expands into India. If you uh, were in my BBI class, you'll recall this. It's a good refresher um, because uh, McDonald's is a very good example of the multi-domestic strategy. As in, they slightly modify all of their product uh, to suit the culture uh, where they are operating. So it could be something uh, as simple as extended hours in Middle Eastern countries to encourage people to break their fast during Ramadan. It could be a special product, um, you know, and in India it was actually several uh, changes. So, you know, this is an example of the multi-domestic strategy, meaning you modify what you are doing for the location that you're operating. The other part is the transnational strategy, which is kind of, you know, same product everywhere around the world, you know, for the very, very most recognizable blue chip brands, it works great. The most choose to have some small changes. So they actually researched uh, for years before they entered the market. So they didn't just, you know, it's not like, for example, you might remember the Target failure in Canada. They kind of bought some stores, opened things up before everything had been in place. McDonald's did it the other way around. They researched all the little details, and when they opened in 96, it was ready. You know, and here's kind of an example of what a McDonald's would look like in India. So I know this is a cultural lesson, but there was a logistics component to this as well. And that's keeping food fresh. And, uh, you know, there's uh, because of the warmer temperatures, uh, not the facilities are not at the same level as they are in North America. There's some food spoilage in India and McDonald's didn't want that to happen. It costs money. People could get sick. It could hurt the brand reputation. So they really planned their logistics, their supply chain. This is when, when people are talking, say they work in supply chain management, they're talking about getting the product there on time, fresh, you know, in, in the best state possible. So they tried to find local sources for all of their ingredients. You know, it couldn't come from one part of India to the other. The roads were not in the best shape. So, you know, local sources for everything. And they also had cold chain management. You know, the food was cold in the warehouse, in the truck, in the restaurant. It never got to room temperature. And that prevent food spoilage. And they also checked periodically, you know, randomly to make sure that, you know, the food had not gone bad. And so spending, you know, 81 million may have saved hundreds of millions later on. And, you know, here's kind of the cold chain management. You can see people are wearing their parkas and toques in the warehouse because it's the same temperature like as a freezer. And, you know, the product never, cold chain management means for food, the product never warms up. So, uh, you know, they uh, just, again, some of the logistics. So fries, uh, one of my... Uh, uh, favorite anecdotes about the history of McDonald's was how 
even in the different parts of the US, the humidity was different. So the fries behaved differently and they made kind of a special potato storage container that would allow the air to circulate around the potatoes and kind of get everything, you know, potatoes in California, the Midwest, the Southwest, the Southeast, all kind of have the same humidity and, you know, uh, the fries would be consistent. So, uh, you know, Indian potatoes are very uh, moist and this soaks up oil and the fries were not golden brown they were lumpy and brown so they had to improve the local potatoes they uh, went over there to study the conditions they uh, transported special saplings to that region and they found the region in india that had the lowest precipitation and you know had their farmers irrigated just like a u.s farmer would and they got more potatoes and more fries that were like the u.s version and here is a pile of them so uh you know the idea of mcdonald's is very big on having drive-throughs and this seems simple drive-through but culturally it's actually been an issue in china when they first opened uh it there People would go through the drive-thru, order their food, park their car in the restaurant parking lot, and enter the restaurant and eat what they had ordered in the drive-thru. So, you know, well, it's not as uh, intuitive as it seems. And, you know, so with people not enough space in cities, a lot of motorcycles, bikes, not, no room for drive-thru, so they went for a home delivery. You know, the roads can be hard to navigate. Uh, they might not be in the best situ um, condition. So again, they set up their food supply chain before they open. You know, Target might not have set up their supply chain before they opened in Canada. McDonald's had their supply chain in order. And, you know, again, they found the local established firms who had a history uh, of being reliable and chose to partner with them. And they, instead of drive through they had these kind of scooters where kind of the food would stay hot, you know, on the back of the scooter. So the pricing, uh, you know, it's seen as a cheap food in Canada, in the U.S., but it's an expensive food in India, you know, so they uh, made it more of a family special occasion, go there once a week for a family dinner. And then once people started to go, they encouraged them to go more often. You know, they got people in the door by having a special occasion and then made it uh an everyday experience and happy meals for whatever reason were especially popular among all ages so they really pushed that and made happy meals one of the brand identification elements that stood up uh, stood out in india you know again and here's you know you see some of the menu items uh, a little different than what you would see in uh, north america you know so one of the main uh, issues beef is not consumed in india so they had to adapt the recipes the big mac was replaced with the maharaja mac the mayonnaise had no eggs the vet the oil was only vegetable oil and they had new items like makalu tiki if you uh, if we go back to the menu board you know probably in the u.s you know if you saw a uh, you know fish you know at mcdonald's might not even be on the first or second page of the menu board but here it's it's featured prominently and now you can see there's a lot of different chicken dishes out there uh, so you know now uh, 25 years later they operate 350 restaurants and they have 325 million customers in india it's been a great success they're trying to double the number of stores they have in the south and west and you know again culture so first they had to get people used to going to 